Hey, Denona High School, this is Momentum. This is 5.1 Momentum, and this is the last segment of our Newtonian mechanics, so make sure you get this down, and this is actually pretty easy stuff. Momentum is is when we're talking about inertia in motion. It's when we're talking about collisions, okay? Whether we're talking about a bullet coming out of a gun, whether we're talking about two people standing on ice pushing each other, and it's kind of like a collision, or we have just... Uh, two cars or two two spheres colliding, okay? And it is one nice, easy equation, and that is momentum, which is the the symbol P, okay? Not what you do in the bathroom, but the symbol P is equal to mass times velocity. So momentum equals your mass times your velocity. And therefore, momentum is in units of kilograms, meters per second. Kilograms is the unit for mass. Velocity is in meters per second, so it's kilograms, meters per second. And the great thing about momentum is it is always conserved in all collisions. It does not matter what. Momentum is always, 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 I'll include one more always, always conserved. Okay? And we have two different types of collisions. We have elastic collisions and inelastic collisions. Elastic collisions are where both momentum and energy is conserved. This is like when you're playing pool with billiard balls. This is where we have all of our momentum and our energy conserved. We call that elastic collisions. Also, gas particles in the air, guys, that's elastic collisions. Okay? They're not going to lose any energy. Inelastic collisions are when we have momentum being conserved, because it's always conserved, but energy is lost. Okay? Energy is lost. Let me add a, a nice Y to that, because I spelled that incorrect. Energy is lost in heat or sound, or like this car right here, in crumpling, okay? Let me uh, show you a quick simulation of what these guys are, and I'm going to show all these values of momentum. Uh, this red ball is going to be going at 1 meter per second, and it is 0.5 kilograms, so its momentum is 0.5 kilograms meters per second. And ball 2 is going to be totally still, and let's take a look at what happens. This is a an totally elastic collision, and you can see what happened to my velocity. My velocity was distributed, okay? One was going a negative velocity, which meant to the left. One was going a positive velocity, which was to the right. And you can see the momentum has changed, but when you add those two momentums together, negative 0.25, positive 0.75, you end up getting what you had at the beginning, which was a momentum conserved, 0.5 kilograms meters per second. Now I want to show you in what an inelastic collision would look like and take a look here. What happened with this inelastic collision? They stuck together, okay? This is totally inelastic. They stuck together and so energy was not conserved. However, look at your momentums. If you add those bad boys up, they end up being about 0 0.50 kilograms meters per second. Your momentum is always conserved. Now, that was only two-dimensional momentum. If we look at three-dimensional momentum here, our red ball will be going to the right, where he has a he has a vector to the right, and two will be going at an angle, which means it will be going towards the right and up. So you can see both number one and number two both have positive x directions in terms of their momentum. So where will they be moving after the collision? In the positive x, right? You can't be moving in a negative x. It can't move backwards. Now look at uh, ball 2 has a positive y, which means after they hit, they can only go in the positive y direction. They can't go in the negative y. They just can't. And so let's take a look to see if that's true. What do you know? Both of them not only moved in the positive x, but the positive y. It is impossible for them to move in the negative y because they have no momentum in that negative y. So let's come back to our um, our problems here, and I want to take a look at a quantitative problem, something that might help you out on uh, to come in in the class for your uh, for your questions. And here we have an SUV with a mass of 1,800 kilograms, and it's traveling eastbound at 15 meters per second, while a compact car is coming the other way. It has a mass of 900 kilograms, it's traveling westbound at 15 meters per second. We have a head-on collision. So I want to show you how to do these types of problems. What you want to do is the sums of all your momentums are always equal to the sums of all your momentums, because momentum is always conserved. And of course, this is before the collision. This is after the collision. So guys, what does the equal sign mean in a momentum problem? It means 
that's when we have a collision. That's when we have a collision. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do MV plus MV is equal to MV plus MV. And of course, on the left-hand side here, I'm going to call this the SUV. I'm going to call this the car. I'm going to call this the SUV, and I'm going to call this car. That way, everything is set. Everything is there beforehand. Okay. So what am I going to do with my mass? My mass is 1,800, and that SUV is going 15 meters per second. But I'm going to call call that positive 15 because it's going to the right. The other one is the other car is 900 kilograms, and he's going negative 15. I got to make sure I put my vectors in there for velocity because velocity is a vector quantity. Now, what happened afterwards is it, they stuck together, which means I can actually add the masses because their velocities are the exact same velocity. So I can add my 1800 and my 900, and my 1800 and my 900 end up giving me uh, a value of 2700. So you can see my momentum of my SUV is going to be 27,000 kilograms meters per second. My momentum of my car is going to be negative 13. 500 zero zero kilograms meters per second and it's negative because momentum is a vector quantity and that equals 2700 times my velocity and all I have to do is add and divide and I end up finding the velocity of both the SUV and the car when they stick together ends up being positive 5 meters per second now what does the positive 5 tell you that means they're both going to be going to the right we could literally get a negative here if the momentum of the car would be a bigger if the momentum of the car was bigger than the 2700, guess what happens? They're going to go backwards. And so this is what happens here. Now, that means we know what's happening with our momentum. Now, if we want to find out whether this is inelastic or elastic, this is going to be pretty easy in order to do. What do you want to do if you want to find out whether your inelastic or elastic is? You want to do your, your energies, 1 half mv squared before, plus 1 half mv squared before at the collision equals the one-half mv squared after the collision. And what you want to do is you want to plug in your 1800 here. You're going to plug in your 15 meters per second and make sure you square it, okay? You're going to plug in your 900 here. You're going to plug in your negative 15 meters per second and you're going to square it, which is the same, okay? And you're going to plug in your 2700 here because that's your total mass and they're both going 5 meters per second and we're going to square it. And we end up doing that, when we end up adding up everything on our left-hand side, we end up getting 303750, 3, 303,750 joules of energy. On this side, we have 33750 joules. Was energy conserved? No way, Jose, okay? Jose Sanchez, right? You listening? No, it is not conserved, okay? It is lost. And we can actually subtract these two values and find the energy lost to be 270000 joules. We lost a lot of energy because we had this big car crash, which means it is what we call inelastic. Inelastic is when we have momentum being conserved, always, and our energy not conserved, okay? There's one last thing that I want to talk about today, and that is a thing called impulse. Impulse. And what is weird is that picture down there with that lady biting her computer, that is one of the top Im Google images when I, I typed in impulse. I don't know why it is, but it is. And so impulse is J, okay? you got to love this chapter because uh, momentum starts with uh, P, and so the symbol is P, and impulse is J, okay? And they couldn't find any other things. So impulse equals my force times my change in my time. And it also equals my change in my momentum, which means it could be my mo MV final minus my MV initial. My momentum at the end minus my, M my momentum at the beginning. Okay? So here I have a, a problem. We have a baseball being thrown. It's being thrown at a speed, and so I can actually plug in my value. I know my mass is 0 0.150. I know my velocity of the baseball when it got hit back at the pitcher is, I'm going to call that positive um, 50 meters per second. At the beginning, my mass is still 0 0.150, but my velocity is going the other direction, so I'm going to call it negative 40. And when I end up doing that, I end up finding my change in my momentum, or we call that my impulse, is 13.5 kilograms meters per second. That's my impulse. 
And since I know my time, my time is 0 0.002 seconds, right there, 0 0.002, I can find the average force that was done on this baseball. And when I divide that, I end up finding an average force of 6750, and of course, force is in newtons. Okay, And that is how you do impulse problems. Impulse problems is when we have a collision and we want to know the force and the time. Guys, I hope this helped. This was momentum. Make sure you know it before you come into class, and I will catch you on the flip side.